All right, so the first part of this question is to find the volume and the surface area of this cone. So let's find the volume first. We'll use the red for that. So your equations, whoops, your equation for a pyramid, this would be a pyramid. Mm -hmm. For volume, it's one third base times height. So do we have the height in here is the question. And the height is going to be straight down the middle. We don't have the height. It looks like we have the slant height, yeah. right? So 20 is the slant height. That's called L. And then the base. All right, so we need to find that height. So to find that height, first of all, it says, I'm trying to read this. Which, which one is 8 inches? Is this 8 inches? Yeah, the, each side is of the hexagon. Okay, so that's 8 inches. Um, all right. Okay, so for the key for this is to find all this information. So we have eight right here, and we have, I'm trying to see what that is. That is that the slant height? That is the slant height, that's 20, right? Yeah, because I think I see a right angle down there. Okay, so um, we want to try to find out, in order to find the height, which is um, that right there, in order to find that height, we have to first find the different angle sides on the on the base. So if I draw this here, I know that that's a 90 degree angle, and I know this angle is going to be what? Right, 30. This is going to be. Well, here's I'll do it the proper way. That is 360. 360 divided by six is 60. So this here is 30. Right? Yeah. That angle is 30. And this angle here is 60. Oh. Okay. okay? So this side is 4. You following me? Yeah, I yeah. am. All right. So if that's 4, and I've got a 30, 60, 90 triangle, here's 4, and this is 60, then what do I know about this is the smallest side, so what's this side going to be? And that side usually is it double or is it It's double. Good. So this side's 8, and this side is 4 root 3. Are you familiar with that? Yeah, yeah. 30, 60, 90, perfect. So those are the relationships there. So now let's try to figure out, um, in this picture, if I want to find the height, imagine that I've got the slant height right here coming up, and I've got that distance right there. That distance is this. It's the apothem. You follow? So now I'm going to look at the, the vertical triangle going up, and I'm going to draw that over here. So here's the, here's the height that we're trying to find, the, the yellow height of our shape. You, all, you see what I'm doing here? Yeah, I do. And then here's my, I'll even put it, do it a little bit on an angle so you can see. Here's my 4 root 3, my apothem. We know this is a right angle, and we know this is the slant height, which right. is 20. So now we can find we can find the height by using Pythagorean's theorem. Okay, Pythagorean's theorem is four root three squared plus h squared equals twenty squared. So h squared equals four hundred minus sixteen times three is. Good, 48. So that's 352. The square root of 352. You can just leave it as a square, square root of 352, or for our purposes, we can leave it as that. Because we're really, we don't want, we want to find the volume. Okay, so now why do we do all that? Because I needed to find, whoops, going the wrong way. I needed one half base times the height. And that's the area of the base? Is this capital B the area of the base? Yeah, it's the area of the base. Okay, so the area of the base. So now let's find the area of this shape right here, the base that I drew. And the area of a regular hexagon has to do with the apothem, right? I think so. Do we have an area formula for, for a regular
and so the area of a regular polygon is equal to one half the perimeter times the apothem and again the apothem is right here and the perimeter would just be eight times six so this area equals one half times eight times six times four root three okay so that's the area of the base so that's actually my b in my formula so what was my formula one third b times h so putting it all together the volume is going to be one third b which is this right here so i'll just put it right in there one half eight times six times four root three times h which there was my h root 352 simplifying that the 3 and the 2 those are actually 6 so let's just cancel that that's why I don't multiply things through I just leave them as factors so that I can deal with them later that makes sense yes so that equals 8 times 4 is 32 times the square root of 3 times 352 now, notice I left 352 like that purposely because your teacher probably is going to want you to simplify that. So let's talk about how you simplify radicals. You understand why I put those 3 and the 352 together? Yeah, because they're both numbers. Perfect. Because now what I'm hoping is 352, which it's not, it's not a multiple of 3. How do I know that? Because the multiplicity of 3, remember that trick? If you add 3, 5, and 2, oh. it equals 10, which is not divisible by 3. Yeah. Remember the divisibility rules for numbers? I don't think I was ever really taught that. So here's one. To know if a number is divisible by 3 or 9, you add the digits together. And if the sum of the digits is divisible by 3 or 9, then so is the number. I mean, I knew about the 9 one of it. Yeah, three is the same. So notice that's not divisible by three, but it still might be, you still might be able to take something out. So 352 is even. So it's two times 150 plus 26 is 176. Did I do that right? I think so, yeah. I took half of 300, which is 50, half of 52, which is 26. Added them together, 176. Take half of 176 now. Half of 160 is 80. I'm thinking of 176 as as 160 plus 16 because I'm taking half of half of 176 is the same as half of this and half of that. So just to, I'm doing mental math. I'm showing you how I do that. So 88, which is nice because 88's 44. 44 is 2 and 22. So look what I can take out. I can take out, that's 16, right? Yeah. And the square root of 16 is? 4. four. So I can take a 4 out of here. And then I'm going to leave a 22 inside there, which is 2 times 11. And I'm going to multiply it by the 3. So my answer is? So take a 4 times 32. 4 times 32 is? Um, 128. Good. Times the square root of, I've still got a 3 in there, and I've still got a 22 in there, which is 66. So there's your answer if they wanted it exact. Now, if they didn't want it exact, you could skip that entire thing I just showed you. Okay. If they didn't want it exact, you'd literally just multiply those numbers together, and you're done. All right, so let's try part B now. We'll do this in blue. So hopefully this will be easier because we already have figured out a bunch of information. They want the surface area of this pyramid. So here's my surface area formula. One half P times L plus B. One half P times L plus B. Well we already have all that information. So it's one half the perimeter we talked about before is eight times six. So again I'm just going to write eight I'm going to write 6 times L, which we have, which is 20, plus the base, which again is the area of the base, which is right there, which was, um, well, I'll just write it as 4 times 6 times 4 times root 3. I just canceled the 2 with the 8, right? 
Okay, now let's simplify that. Let's cancel that out with that. Again, that's four. So we've got um, 24 times 20. What's 24 times 20? Four times 20 is 80. Four times four is 16, 96. No, that's not right. 24 times 20. Double 24 is 48, so 480. I don't know what I did in my head, so sorry. 480 plus, what's four, What's um, 24 times four? 24 times four is 96. 96 root three. There's your answer. So part B, it says if the pyramid is sliced two inches and then another slice parallel four inches above the base. So they're talking about going two inches up like this right here. So that's two inches up. That new, that new height is two inches less than the original height, which was four root 22. And then another slice. So take another slice two inches up from there like that. She's telling you, she's asking you descri to describe the shape and the size. Well, the shapes are gonna still be, they're gonna be similar. Whoops, let's not do that. The shapes are gonna be similar. Meaning proportionate to each other. She doesn't want us to be specific, I don't think, with that. Similar shapes, in other words, hexagon still. But smaller in size. And if she wanted specifics, I don't, I don't think she wants specifics, but that would be the answer. Similar shapes, but obviously small in size.